I have been thinking, <laughs> I've been thinking quite a bit about this huge problem that America has right now. And let's go ahead and talk about the guy who stole my 740i BMW. Let's go ahead and look at what he was doing. First of all, he was intentionally stealing from me. First time I shut the car off. Then they paid me and I turned it back on. That was a mistake. Then he actively circumvented the GPS kill switch. And he continued to drive the car. And he knew he wasn't paying me. He knew he couldn't pay me. And he was driving the car. And I remember, and it was very, very clear, the day that he got stopped by the police and the day that he got arrested, um, he was surprised. And I remember when he called me, because I got the paperwork from the DEA today, who I got to fill out. He was shocked. So let's kind of put it back in reverse. He was intentionally committing a crime, intentionally. And he was shocked when law enforcement nabbed him and the chick he was with and they went to jail. He was shocked. And I remember the conversation because he was like, I am trying to pay you $2,000. And before I cussed him off, I said, trying to pay me and actually paying me are two different things. When I'm looking at this and I reflect upon my friend who quit her job and I am looking at some events that happened this week. This happened last night. I had a girl who brought back a car and I'm pretty much digging the contact list drop off and pick up thing. So I was sitting in my car and I saw that she was parked and I checked the car out. And I was wondering why she was sitting there with the headlights on. Then about five minutes after I checked her out, she drove off. And this is a car that I have the GPS system on. So I was able to track her whole movements. And she went from Sandy Springs to Fairburn, Georgia. Because once again, I was like, why do they always go over there? And I was texting her. I was like, where's the car? You want me to check it out? I'm here. Where's the car? Where's the car? Where's the car? And she literally goes on the other side of the world. So I see that she's kind of heading back and then she stops at the Waffle House. And I'm like, okay. So I send her a last text. Now she's completely ignoring me, completely ignoring me, right? And I said, if my car isn't back where it needs to be within an hour, I'm calling the police because you're not renting it because the car is checked out. So this would be a stolen car report. And about 15 minutes to spare, the car is back. But it's not back where she parked there originally. Because see, when, it, when you mention the police, they get spooked. <laughs> they get spooked. And she left it at the wrong building, but she brought it back. I was able to secure my car. And like I said, she stopped for gas and she stopped at the Waffle House. Did she get the full tank of gas? No. But this was a relatively long-term rental that I made um, about $2,500 off. And I can easily absorb the gas from that and the car wasn't damaged. There was no issues, no check engine lights. And then I have this situation that happened. With, if you remember player player with the Range Rover, and I've had a lot of problems with this Range Rover. Girl, I turned the car off and she contacts me. I got stranded with my nine year old and five month old and I was like, does Georgia Power care if you have a nine year old? No, they, they cut your power off. You, you don't pay Georgia Power, you don't have no power. So I ask her where the car is, and this is where it gets weird 
because at one point I get a message, the tow truck is here to tow the car. And since I've dealt with tow trucks, you have to give a tow truck driver specific directions where the car is. I don't get specific directions. She tells me that the car is at Town Center Mall, a very general location. So I get in my car and I head up there and I'm driving around Town Center Mall. I don't see the Range Rover. And then the GPS part of the GPS kill switch stops working. I cannot find my car. I cannot locate my car. And then to add fuel to the fire, the chick who rented the car blocked me. Every time I call her, it goes straight to her voicemail. So once again, I am not, um, I'm of the opinion, because I filed a police report that she found the GPS kill switch, she pulled it out, and I feel that she's driving the car. That's what I feel is happening. So we've got that situation going on. And a lot of people, when I started, it's like, you gotta have the GPS kill switches. This will be the second GPS kill switch that has been interrupted. And I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. Stick with me. So let's t take all three of these people. The guy who stole my BMW, my friend who quit her job, and this person who ripped out the GPS system and is driving the vehicle. These are all tertiary uh, moves, tertiary plays. Where is the long time, pl long term planning? And I'm just sitting there like, how long do you think you're going to be able to drive my vehicle, not pay me, block me? How long do you think you're going to be able to do that? And I begin to kind of dive into the data. There is no long term planning. Remember the woman I talked about who had seven or 14 kids? I don't know. She had a lot of kids and she said something that was really, really remarkable. She said somebody needs to take care of these kids. Somebody, not the fact that I had sex, I got pregnant and it's my responsibility. No, 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 no. She said somebody needs to take care of these kids. And I begin to think, when I rented the 740, I drove up in the Porsche and they saw that I had a Porsche. And now the Range Rover was contactless, so she didn't know what I drive. She, she didn't know what, what situation I'm in. But the pattern is the same. People are making these short-term plays with no regard to the long-term consequences. This is the problem that America has. America is doing stuff, quitting jobs. Like the number of folks who have quit their jobs and the number of folks who are going to experience economic hardship in the future, I can't even calculate what that's going to be. Because right now, at no point, and I'm, I'm going to give you a theory. I have a theory where all this came from. You have a bunch of people making these short term plays with no regard to the consequences. And what I feel, and this is a theory, I got to do some more research on it. But I feel that this happened because of the stimulus economy, the phantom economy, where you can have a house and not pay your mortgage and not get more foreclosed on where you could rent an apartment and not pay your rent and not get kicked out or evicted. Or you can go out and buy a brand new car and not pay for it. And the repo man never came. And this didn't go on for a month or two. This went on for some people for two years. So we have people who are operating on the phantom economy marketplace dynamics, which were subsidized. The reason that home prices have skyrocketed is because the people who were not paying their mortgages were protected. They were protected. And 
with this and this this is something like you know i've mentioned this before when i was in the military they did not let you take too long a leave because you lose your military bearing and what i have seen is a lot of people have lost like um i met a girl we're, we're dating and she actually manages a concrete cutting company they're having the hardest time finding workers right now concrete um restaurants so what are all of these people who are not working doing they're homosexuals they're living with mom and dad they're living with big mama so they don't have the full array of a independently self-responsible person so they can get away with not going to work so right now we have a lot of people in america who are making short-term plays with no regard to five years down the road 10 years down the road these people are not thinking past next week and this bodes a huge problem for america huge huge problem the problem is when you have that many people who are making these short-term plays that are going to end up in economic disaster that's going to be reflected because what we're in the process of doing right now we're leaving the stimulus phantom economy and we're starting to move back to the real economy but people are still operating on stimulus phantom economy rules that i could not work and I don't get kicked out. I don't get my car repoed and I get a little bit of stimulus money. And right now I see this because this is something I'm observing in my car rental business. For the last two months, I've had perpetually late people. Uh, I've got like I had to file out three police reports. Well, actually, I got two. And one the cop, you know, is once again, when you're talking to these police officers, some of them know the law, some of them don't. So this third one, I'm gonna have to wait until I get the green card back, which could be three weeks, because typically these people give me bad addresses. They don't live there anymore. So we got that situation going on. And here's another situation from the car rental business. I had a woman, she had a car. This car doesn't have the GPS kill switch. So I don't know where it is. I don't have the ability to cut it off. And she just completely fell off the, the map, stopped communicating. Then I get a communication from her that a lot of bad stuff has happened. I think her husband died and some other stuff. And she was trying to work out some kind of payment plan because she needed the car. And I was like, you know, you're 14 days behind. Just bring the car back. Then I gave her another day, another day, no car, no more communication. So I filed a police report and apparently she's been nabbed. She's gotten arrested. Here's the thing. Once again, I know many of you feel that I'm heartless, but once again, I'm in business to make money. I'm not in business to help out a bunch of people who are suffering economic hardship. I would not, I mean, this business is bad enough and once again, I'm already at $4,000 this month in lost rent. Lost rent from people that I've had to turn cars off. Uh, most of the cars I've turned off, I've been able to retrieve and get them like the Porsche was one of them. But you have all of these people out here who are making these short term plays where they're not thinking past today. They're not thinking past today they are literally living on the edge of life and this is where it's going to get really big for america right now we're leaving the stimulus economy and we're moving back to the real economy black friday sales big signal huge signal worst black friday sales season in 70 years that's a real economic signal because people didn't have the money in these corporations and these corporations have predictive analysis software.
Target didn't open, Walmart didn't open. You're not even seeing on YouTube madness videos from Walmart on Black Friday sales. You're not seeing any of that stuff because one of the things that has happened is people don't have money. This is a real economic signal. They don't have money. So what is happening with these people is the real economy is kicking in. The real economy is kicking in and this is creating a true marketplace dynamic that's just going to get deeper and stronger into 2022 because I estimate, and I'm just spitballing numbers off the top of my head. We've got a population base of 330 million. I would estimate that a hundred to 150 million people are caught in this lower economic strata that are making all of these short term plays with no regard to, I mean, there was someone that I talked to, I think is very smart. And she said that people cannot plan for tomorrow, let alone plan for the day. And I respect that because what I am seeing is that people are consistently making feel good plays because since we have let like take these people who jumped into the great resignation, you have a bunch of people who have quit their jobs, who don't have another job, who are just winging it. They're living out friends, family. They're just winging it. And if they knew what I knew, the economic data that shows that when you experience a loss of income for three months, just three months, that can impact your earnings for the next 10 years. So you have a whole bunch of people who have made, let's call them feel good plays, like the person who stole my BMW. They needed a car. They did what they needed to do to have a car with little to no regard to the consequences because that's a felony. And this is one of the things that I'm getting ready to do. Uh, I'm going to start typing up like, Hey, thank you for renting my car. I really appreciate it. However, if you feel that your money's funny and you cannot pay for the car, please bring back the car. Cause I would hate to have you arrested. I'm going to start leaving that message in the car because I've isolated some things. The older BMWs, I don't really have too much of a problem with them. But the Range Rover, the Porsche, I have a lot of problems with those cars because what I feel happens when these people rent my cars for a prolonged period of time, they start to feel that those cars are now their cars. And this creates a situation of fake ass ownership. And they don't want to let these cars go. Because like that last night, I was just shocked when I saw that chick, she sent me a text. If I had my phone, I would show it to you. Hey, please check out the car. And as soon as I check out the car, she takes off. And I'm just like, and then, you know, we're having this conversation and she's like, oh, I just got home. I just seen all these texts. I was like, you didn't just get home. You just dropped the car off because you left here and you went to Fairburn. Cause I was able to track cause I was sitting there like, why is she going? Cause well, th this is a, a huge, huge problem. Typically when I had to go pick up cars, I'm always going to the South side. I'm always going to the South side. And I was just sitting there like, where is she going? And then when she stopped, she stopped almost 40 miles away from Sandy Springs. And I'm just sitting there like, if I turn this car off, I don't know if she's going to leave the key and then I got to go get it. So it's like, all right, let's, let's have a little strategy here. All right. You know, she's ignoring you, but I feel that she was getting my text. And then when I saw her get on 85 North, that's when I hit the text. If my car isn't back here within an hour, I'm calling the police. Technically you are not renting this car. You have stolen this car. And it spooked her because like I said, she didn't even park the car back where she got it. No, she was spooked. She, she brought it to the building. She got out of it and she left. 
But when all of these, this collective mass of people who've made all of these short-term plays with no long-term planning hits, this is going to be another real economic signal. Just like Black Friday sales were garbage, because I saw in the comments that, you know, many of the deals that the retailers, they knew a lot of these retailers have predictive analysis software so they can predict with a great deal of accuracy what's going to happen. So they knew before Black Friday hit, they knew it was going to be garbage. They knew. So they had that signal probably months ago, because once again, they crunched these numbers because, you know, I used to be in the retail industry and typically you know when people start preparing for christmas january this is why um, this girl i used to know she says i sell christmas she sold santa claus reefs and all these ornaments and she sold them as a wholesale level so they would like people would part putting their orders in january february and march for december so there's a very long lead time. So these companies knew that Black Friday was going to be garbage. Now, notice the difference. You've got people in the lower economic strata who with no long term planning skills whatsoever. I might actually create a course about that because I am seeing this over and over and over and over. And when this hits, because like I said, 100 million to 150 million people are in that lower economic strata who are doing things like this, who are quitting their jobs, who are renting cars, not paying for them, keeping cars, and they're setting themselves up for long-term economic pain because they are uneducated. I'm not going to say these people are stupid because, you know, there are many, you know, to say 150 million people are stupid, that's ridiculous. I'm going to say 150 million people are uneducated and they're completely unaware because like I said, I've done this a lot of studies like if like seriously, if your income gets hit for three months, reduced for three months, that can impact you for the next 10 years going forward. But most folks don't know that most folks are unaware of that. So this is why. I feel that 2022, and I feel that this is going to roll really hard the summer of 2022 because all the stimulus money is out the economy and all of the prop up, like they're evicting people now. The repo man is reaping, repo and stuff. I don't know if they're doing foreclosures. I haven't really checked on that, but I don't know if foreclosure activity has up. And once again, let's talk about foreclosures. Once they start doing foreclosures, oh my God, there's going to be such a backlog that it's going to take them years to work through that mess. Once they start doing foreclosures, unless this Democratic body, the Senate, the, you know, the Senate, um, the House of Representatives and the presidency, they put up some type of legislation forcing the mortgage companies to rewrite these mortgages, which I don't know. I haven't checked, but I don't think that's in the works. So at some point, the dominoes are going to fall. And I feel the summer of 2022 is when they're going to start rolling. Also, what's something that happens every year around Christmas time? Large companies start laying off huge blocks of people. I feel like there was this one company, this mortgage company, better something. They, they fired like 900 people on a zoom call. Notice I said fire, not laid off fire. It's like, you're out of here. That's going that activity is going to intensify. You're going to see a lot of companies getting rid of people to make their first quarter numbers look better. So we're going to have that. And then we got all these people making these short term plays. And I predict that summer of 2022, a lot of these businesses that are struggling to get people, I feel that's going to disappear by next summer. Because once again, these people are operating on the stimulus phantom economy rules, which means I don't have to work. 
I don't have to pay my bills and nothing bad other than me being broke all the time really happens. I don't get kicked out. I don't get foreclosed on. My car doesn't get repoed. Even the credit card companies are working with people. So people are operating on this phantom stimulus economy rules. And what I feel just in the case of my friends, and I saw some of your comments, it's like, help your friend out. Um, I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to help her out because I've already helped her out a little bit. I already helped her out a little bit. When you fall and you fall hard, that is one of life's greatest lessons that you would experience. And this is a lesson I feel that she needs to go through. Cause like I said, if I had known her before I was like, you can't quit your job. You cannot afford to quit your job. I would have mapped it out and I would have showed her and I would have convinced her. But once again, just like she made that decision where she had one year of freedom and now she has five or six years of economic pain ahead of her. And I mean, she is one of millions, one of millions of people who are going to go through this type of stuff because this is why, you know, I started doing some more research. Crime is surging across the nation. Crime is going up through the nation because we have literally 30% of the country, more than 30% of the country out here making these decisions for these short term plays with no regard. Like, cause I, I was sitting there and I was thinking about when he called me and he was actually shocked that the police had pulled him over. And this is what's funny. I told him that I was going to call the police. If he didn't return my car, I told him and he said, no need to call over police. And even with that warning, even with that warning, he still got nabbed by the police because he was operating on hope. I hope he doesn't call the police. I hope I get some money and you know, I'm just sitting here looking and I'm seeing a lot of short term planning all like when I say short term planning, I'm talking about Monday to Wednesday. I'm not even talking about Monday to Friday. I'm talking Monday to Wednesday. We're going to make these plays. We're going to do this stuff and we're going to hope that it works out. And when it doesn't, because 2022 is going to be the great year of revealing how bad your decisions were, it's going to be the year where so many people are going to, um, so many people are going to realize the, 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 the error of their ways, because right now people are still counting in this protective bubble, this protective cloud. And one of the things that is happening is that people are unaware they are um, not paying attention to the things that are happening. They are not, they're out here just operating on hope. And there's, you know, a hope is not a good plan. Hope is not a good plan. So they operate on hope. They're making all these short term plays. And then what you're going to see is the repercussions start to slap them upside the head. You're going to see a lot of people who are going to experience extreme economic hardship. I mean, there is nothing I can say on this YouTube channel that will even compare to the economic hardship that's coming. Like, once again, I've been talking about this, the global reset. If you're living in a house, you're going to be in an apartment. If you're living in a house, if it gets bad, you go, you'll bypass the apartment and go living in the van or be homeless. This is real. This is real stuff. And a lot of people are unaware of what's coming. This is the tragic, sad part of this. They are unaware that it's coming. But just like a death, you know, that's one thing you can count on. At some point in your life, you're going to die. That's a given. 
And this stuff is coming. It is coming and it's going to hit so hard. It's going to be such, because like I said, this is going to dramatically impact the economy. I want you to think all of these people who are living the La Vida Loca, they are living in an apartment, they're living in a house, they're not paying bills. They're not paying bills. At some point, real marketplace forces are going to intervene. And when they intervene, it's going to be nasty. I, I want you to think if you are a person who's been living in the house for the last 20 months and you've not paid your mortgage in 20 months, 20 months, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Cause like I said, you know, with the foreclosure process, these people will probably get another 36 months, if not even 48 months to stay in that house and not pay for it because there's going to be, once it starts hitting, once it starts hitting, unless Congress intervenes and make the mortgage companies rewrite the laws and said, everyone that was in forbearance, what we need to do is you need to put all of their payments at the back of the loan and they must resume paying you. That's the only way I see preventing this catastrophe. That's just, it's in the, it's in the, it's, 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 it's bacon. It's bacon. It's, it's, it's just like, it's just a matter of when it's going to pop. And at some point, because like I said, you know, I haven't really done the research on the forbearance people because I don't know what's going to happen. But like, from what I know, unless Congress intervenes, these people are in trouble. The folks who have not paid their loans in m almost two years, these folks are in trouble. And then here's something else, too, that I've seen is people don't know how to budget. And this is one of the things that like after I get through transferring a lot of older videos from the defunct Savage Finance to the new personal finance channel, I'm gonna get into the new content because I know there are many videos on YouTube don't save money. And if you're part of that top 20%, you can get away with not saving money because you're making maybe I think the top 15% of people in America make 100K or more that your income is so high that you have so much excess that you can throw money in this investment and do these things. But for 85% of the country, that's bad advice. I implore you. I feel that everyone who's in income danger zone, number one, which is less than $50,000 a year needs to be driving a paid off car, need to have $5,000 cash somewhere, somewhere, and potentially two or three credit cards with nothing on them, just in case, just in case. Because one of the things that's going to happen when all of this hits, because like I said, I predict it's gonna be next summer when it's really, really gonna hit. It's gonna be pow yow. You're gonna see domestic violence, you're gonna see crime, it's gonna explode because these people are not planners. They do stuff with little regard to the repercussions. Because I've been sitting there like, you know, all right. Now, like I, I tried to put in another police report today, but this guy knew the law and he wanted to see the green card, which I don't have back because all these folks give me bad addresses. So I may not get that card back for three weeks. So one of the things that I need to understand that I'm trying to wrap my heads around because I had my wake up call. I was homeless. I know how bad it can get if I don't conduct myself accordingly. I know, you know, for me at this point, it'd be pretty hard for me to fall that fall. Pretty hard because I don't make stupid moves. Like when I moved into this place, I have a money in an account to pay the rent for the next year. 20, I'm not even worried about 2022 rent because that money's already earmarked, tucked away regardless of what my business does, because that's how I operate. I always operate from a long-term perspective. And for many people to forecast, and like when I was at Rental Crate, we used to have to do forecast of our sales because believe it or not, if you make enough phone calls, you get enough appointments, you have enough activity, there is a formula 
that can predict what you will do if you're doing the work. So people don't understand forecasting to that point, but man, I think 2022 is going to be a horrible year for a lot of people. And I feel that in you know 2022, we're going to begin to slide into the recession and inflation is going to keep going up. And, you know, a lot of people are worried about inflation. When I was a kid, you know, gas was less than a dollar, all three grades of premium, and most cars ran on regular. Gas was like 60, 60 cents, 70 cents, something like that per gallon when I was a kid. So inflation is something that is with us at all times. It doesn't go away. Why is the price of houses going up? Inflation. Price of gas, inflation, certain foods, inflation, coffee, inflation. So if you're going to sit and worry about inflation versus doing anything about it, you're just going to freak yourself out because I don't worry about inflation. You know what I worry about? I worry about making more money. It's like, OK, so the things I want now cost this because, like I said, I got a 85 inch television. You know what? The, you know, that's not a need. That's a want. Um, I paid the same price for that 85 inch television that I paid for my 65 inch television that I have in my bedroom. And I bought that 65 inch television in 2016, 2015, 2015, almost six years ago. So the things that you don't need, are on fire sale and the things that you do need food, gas, housing, that stuff is going through the roof. So you got a choice. You can sit in panic or you can adjust your monetary policies, your personal financial monetary policies and deal with it on a better level. That choice is yours. But once again, the whole gist of this video is we have 30 something percent, maybe even larger, maybe 40% of the country that's making these short term plays that are financially that will be financially disastrous. Like I am beginning to understand because I have someone who is renting a car and like every time I get this message, because I get this message more than you would know, because it tells you on the gas cap what grade of gas to put in there. It tells you and it's like, what grade of gas does this run on? And I was like premium. Oh, that is a signal. If they're worried about the greater gas that something runs on and they're not actually doing what they need to do, if they're worried about gas, if they're worried about buying premium gas, that scares me because this tells me that their money is funny. And also, once again, I've got a situation right now where Whatever they bring the car back on, I don't fill them up anymore because I'm sick of dealing with these people because once again, it feels like I'm managing children. You got the car. It was on the full tank of gas when you got it. Why are you going to bring it back on E? You know why you're bringing it back on E? Because you don't have any money. Your money is funny. That's why you're bringing the car back on E. You got this car that you cannot afford to put gas in. Like the girl last night in the BMW. She took the car. It was on full. When she brought it back, it was on a quarter of a tank. But because I made twenty four hundred dollars, that was easily absorbed in the revenue. But someone does a short term rental. They get a car with a full tank of gas. They bring it back two, three days. I have lost money because they did not fill up the car with gas. So what I have done, I am not filling up cars like, you know, there was one car. They brought it back like on scary E. Scary E is when the lights on and it says the range is like three miles. All right, I'll go fill it up to a quarter tank and I'll rent it out that way because this is something I've learned from my demographic. These people don't have money for gas. They wanna rent a car that runs on premium and they don't have money for gas. Once again, lack of planning, lack of planning. So we've got this situation. Well, I have this situation, me, of dealing with people like once again, I'm just renting out the cars on whatever they bring it back because like I said, uh, I'm going to do some I'm going to do something on Hustlers Kung Fu with the Kill Switch Chronicles. Give me a little time to get that. 
because one of the things I've learned is this demographic is highly irresponsible. This demographic, and this is, this is why uh, this month has not been bad because I've been tightening up on policies. Like if they look scary young, I don't rent to them. And I got another situation where I'm probably gonna have to turn the car off and go get it. Because once again, these people operate on hope. They don't operate on solid principles. Solid principles is if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna yield this result. They don't operate, they operate on hope. And I got another person that I probably gotta turn the car off because she's hoping to make money. Hoping, hoping to make money. And one of the things that I've learned in this thing is like uh, the Porsche, now there's a deposit and that Porsche hasn't been gone out since I put the deposit down on it. Like you gotta do a $500 deposit to get this car. And you know why? Because if you put down the deposit, you have something you get to lose. So that's gonna adjust behavior. And whatever happens with the Range Rover, if I get it back, cause this might be my true loss where I may not get this car back because um, that car was reported stolen, I think Tuesday. I'm not sure, I have to look at my paperwork and they haven't found it yet. And typically you find it in two days. So another thing that happens is people have to understand that the bad uninformed decisions that they make today can result in economic catastrophe three, four, five months or a year later. This is one of the reasons that, you know, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. There's all these videos talking about getting credit cards and going into debt to start your business. I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a very bad idea because business is unpredictable. If you go ahead and like say, you get $100,000 worth of funding and you throw it off on this business ideal and the business doesn't work, guess what? Now you owe hundred K and your credit's destroyed. So you only get one time to do that, or you get to do that like every seven years. So in your lifetime, you'll get four times to do that if you destroy your credit. So once again, man, I feel America's in deep, 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 deep trouble because we have a lot of short term planners who have no regard for the future, no regard for next week, no regard for next month, no regard for next year. They do what feels good at the moment. In the case of the person who actively crawled under the dash and disabled my GPS kill switch because they knew they weren't gonna have the money, but they knew they didn't wanna return the car. I mean, this is a bad, bad situation. I believe the financial storm that is brewing is gonna hit so hard next summer, it's gonna be ridiculous. So what do, you know, what do you can do to prevent you know, from getting caught up? Number one, get out of debt. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Like I had to start paying on my EDIL loan recently. To me, I consider that good debt. Like personal debt, other than that car, which Quasi is kind of business debt. Uh, I don't have any personal debt. So you want to get away from personal debt. You want to stop spending money on stupid stuff. You, if you got like good credit and you're using your credit to buy trinkets and TVs and stuff like that, stop, stop. This economic storm that is coming is going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy. And you know, if you're in that top 20%, you'll be fine. But if you're in that bottom 80 to 85%, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. Because, you know, I, I'm, I've said this before. If you work in a warehouse, you cannot work from home. If you drive a truck, you cannot work from home. If you work in a restaurant serving people, you cannot work from home. There's a ton of jobs that you cannot work from home. And unless you give yourself those skill sets, it's not in the cards. But once again, we have people who are quitting their jobs. Uh, I actually met someone who quit their job and then started an e-commerce company. And I sat down and I said, hey, how much money do you have saved? And they said, not much. I got maybe 1,500. 
And I was like, so you quit your job, you got $1,500 and you want to start this business. And it's like, yeah, you know, uh, we got the website and you know, I, I, I said nothing. I did not bring, I did not, y'all would have been proud of me because I have learned to let people do what they want to do because they're going to do what they want to do anyway. And I said, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And I, this guy is going to be in economic trouble in three months, if not sooner. But I didn't say nothing. I left it alone. I left it alone because it is not my job to go around peeing on people's parades. I was like, oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. But, you know, and last time I talked to him, he looked extremely stressed because uh, we had coffee and stuff. And I was like, how's it going? He says, yeah, you know, it's a little it's a little tougher than I thought. And I said, oh, really? What are you experiencing? Like, I already knew what was coming. I, I, I was like, I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. Because once again, you can't tell people they're wrong when they feel that they're right. When they feel that they're right, you, 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 you just can't. You, you cannot tell them that they're wrong when they feel that they're right. There ain't nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. So I've learned my lesson. I've learned a lot of lessons. And when people tell me something that's a bad idea, you know what that's like? That's awesome. I do not get into the real details because, see, at that point, it's too late. They've already jumped out the window <laughs> with no parachute. It's too late. I can tell them the, well, the probability, it's, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> I was like, I've learned a lot because sometimes you have to bump your head to know that wood is hard. And once again, a lot of people are bumping their heads and that hard wood's gonna slap them real hard 2022. It's gonna be really, really ridiculous because right now this is why crime is going through the roof because people have got into that desperate mode. It's like, I need some money right now. And they know getting the job ain't gonna help them because they need the money right now. So something illicit is that's what they're going to jump, jump to. But the summer of 2022, that's when it's going to hit, I think, like crazy. And when I mean hit, it's going to be like the great resignation that is all up in the news and people talking about quitting their jobs. It's going to be I think this is going to make the news because it's going to be that bad. We're going to have 100, 150 million people who are going to be catching financial help. And it doesn't have to be like that. And honestly, if I had to Monday, mat, Monday back Monday morning quarterback, it was the government in the stimulus package, because if the government had let the economy do what it was going to do, if there was no forbearance, we never would have saw this crazy spike in housing prices and the economy would be better. In my opinion, if they had just let the chips fall where they fall, let people suffer. I don't think because essentially what they did is to just kick the can down the road and the suffering that's going to happen in 2022 is going to be greater than the suffering would have happened if they had just let things fall. That's just my opinion, because um, I like I said, I did a video. I felt that giving people an additional six hundred dollars per week, twenty four hundred dollars on top of their employment benefits. I feel that was a bad idea because what it did is it set people up to expect more because when you give someone you give a person who's not extremely motivated that kind of access they want more they're like that cat you you fed a little, this little stray cat that came to your back door and you fed the cat a little milk and then you look around on wednesday the cat's back meow, meow. he's looking for some more milk and that's how these people are they i feel that the cares act robbed people of their self-sufficiency and it has created an even larger dependent class. And I know I'm sounding very Republican right now, but if you look at the numbers, the way that I look at the numbers, that's what happened. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. All right, so next week, we're gonna get back to training. I'm gonna be sending out emails and stuff. So once again, be looking out for that. If you're in the corporate papers, if you're in Hustlers Kung Fu, we're gonna get into that. And we're gonna start training people and hopefully I can do my part to help people not be globally reset. Because if you do certain things, and once again, this is certain things is starting a small business, 
This will help you from being globally reset or still getting out of debt. Cause like I said, I'm doing all my channels from a practical help standpoint versus a YouTube hype standpoint. So the information I'm going to give you is going to help you. It's not going to hurt you. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.